Well then, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this, the sixth fight of the night, a featherweight contest and a fight of three rounds of three minutes. So it's time to meet the fighters one more time in the blue corner, representing Blackburn Predators, weighing in at 64.2 kilograms, hailing from Blackburn with a fight record of one victory with two defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Aaron Cotton. And it's time to meet his opponent standing in the red corner, representing Coliseum Gym, weighing in at 64.8 kilograms, hailing from Farnworth by way of Poland, with a record of two defeats so far. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Kaspar Zasada! I mean, I'm 16 Butler now. I'm sat here with Jamie, the haymaker here. Huge support for these two guys on the undercard. Yeah, it certainly is Ian. Uh, Adam Cotton from uh, Blackburn Predators taking on Casper Sassada. We've seen Casper as a young lad, didn't we? Uh, fighting at Amateur C a while back. It's great to see him make the, uh, the move to Amateur A. It's his second uh, Amateur A, well, Unified Amateur Rules fight. Taking on a very tough. Aaron Cotton. Up against the cage. That's out of there. Some good work. Come on, Aaron. Is he looking for is he looking for his climbing his legs up? I think he's got hold of the arm. Yeah, it looks like he's got the arm tied up a little bit. That's what I like to see though from the guard. Working his legs up, a nice attacking guard. Yeah, maybe he needs to open the guard up a little bit more, though, to attack a bit better. Well, it's difficult crushed up against the fence like that, Jamie. The good defence to the guard work is squashing him up against the fence. Yeah, try and pressure on that neck. That's it, putting the pressure on the neck. Yeah, put the pressure on the neck there, trying to, uh, you know, sort of stop the, stop, well, block the breathing a little bit, you know. Any kind of pressure on the neck, it's like a can opener, isn't it? It's like we use the can opener position. It's very difficult to climb the legs up high. In the moment. Now he's attacking for the Kimura, I think. He can get a nice sweep from there, but he's tough up against the cage, though. Tough to get a sweep from that, that position against the cage. It's great if he's in the middle of the, uh, it's he's been, in the middle of the cage, but. But it has been all attacking from the bottom since it's gone to the floor. Yeah, it has, yeah. The scoring system in the UK, well, and in the uh, in, in MMA in general, he's uh, the unified rules. He's, he's quite indifferent when it comes to work from the battle though isn't it yeah it certainly is I mean it favours the striking first and then sort of dominate and grappling and takedowns which you know an attacking guard game isn't but it's dangerous and when you're looking for a finish you're looking for, you know yeah absolutely you know it's uh, when you are looking for like I say if you're looking for the finish from the bottom then it, you're scoring points in my eyes but good work from uh, from from Casper really trying to keep pressure on his fighter like I say using that cage putting the pressure on the neck up against the cage it's not nice against the uh, the, <laughs> the mesh wire either is it no it's not but um, I just think Casper's done nothing sort of attacking wise from this position since he got there it's been all defence makes it very difficult to score does his time so uh, Cotton is tying that, that arm up maybe trying to, trying to isolate it but could maybe work for uh, on the platter there Casper using the head well, he's, you know, he's pushing him in against the fence, he's using his head against his head, he's just, I'm, I just don't see him doing anything to sort of work for a finish or to see what his game plan is. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, not too sure myself really, he just seems to have lay on top there for, for the round, didn't really do a great deal, except for hold on there, you know. It's, it's tough to tough to call uh, a, a round like that, Ian. Yeah, I'd be very interested to see um, the Blackburn Predators, you know, Rob there, Rob Friedman, talking to Courtney in the corner. 
and I think he's going to be saying, look, get on top. I'd like to see, you know, is he, has he just got an attacking guard game or has he got a good top position? Because if he has, I'd like to see him get, get a take down and get a top position. Yeah. Well, yeah, you'd like to, you'd like to say that because his guard game was nice. He was very attacking. Uh, a variety I, I, of attacks. I think he, the other thing with, with, uh, with Con there, he, he kept his legs uh, close into the guard, uh, which going for an attacking position, I like to see fighters from the bottom using the open guard. Yeah. Using the range of the feet, going for maybe an armbar, triangle, you know, trying to work that. That's what I like to do from the floor, from the bottom. I, I agree, but I think he was walking up. He kept his legs crossed, but he was walking up, trying to get them higher and trying higher. Work, trying to work obviously higher and higher. High he obviously favours the high guard. Yeah, I and mean, and fair play to um, to Casper. He did do a good job of keeping him crushed, so he stopped him from doing that. But like I said, I'd like to see um, a takedown now from Cotton in the top position. Oh, nice, uh, nice head kick there. A little bit light on the head kick, but it was nice movement. So there we go. So we've had a uh, take down attempt there from from Aaron Cotton. Good defence though from uh, from from Casper. Yep, Casper caught him there. He's got the. But there, oh, good work, relentless work there. Well, like I said, if I was up even the corner, that's what I would have told him to do for this round. Got that lockdown on the leg. Again, not always a great thing to do, Ian. Like we said in an earlier fight, that lockdown isn't always a great position. When you're on the bottom, you can take some big, meaty shots from there. You certainly can. This is a jiu-jitsu uh, guy who we saw with a good ground game, good jiu-jitsu game. So I'm thinking he's going to be more inclined to try and pass. I'll try and work his jiu-jitsu. Yep. Maybe get that leg out there. Try and feed that right leg through. And into a half guard. Bob Freeman there, Shai, for, for, yeah. for ground and pound. And, and that's good advice. You know, you might be a jiu-jitsu player. Use the ground and pound to set up that pass. Make him open those legs with the punches. And there he goes, he's passed. Great work from Casper, though. escape from Casper. Great work there, Ian. Superb work. I mean, now we see, uh, we see Aaron Cotton back on his back, where he definitely doesn't want to be. Yep, he can't just tie up, he needs to start working again. Yeah, you know, he, he, he's got that he's got that side control, well, half guard, sorry. Again, neither of them dropping enough shots from their positions. It, 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 it astounds me, you need to be working that position, really sort of working, even body shots from there can cause yep. some serious damage and really open you up. Well, the Blackburn Predators guys are screaming, work, work. You know, they know this guy, he needs to work. You're not going to win a fight from the bottom unless you're really working hard. Yeah, he's just and locking that leg up in the, in, in the half guard position and happy to sort of sit there. You know, he's got that, he's, he's got sort of the terror guard. That's right, yeah. Halfway in yeah. there, but not using it though, not using it to, to its full advantage where no. you can sort of push your opponent back. It you looks to be, you know, the, the, the way that he stopped moving and sort of locked up, he just seemed disheartened by the fact that he was on top and it's been reversed and he's just... From there, he's really froze. Yeah. He's not done anything much. Not the attacking game we saw from in the first round. He, you know, he's got an underhook there. He's got the left underhook. If he wanted to now, he can try and work his way up. You maybe hip out and try and work his way out. But he doesn't seem yeah, to want to he's, there. He's, he's not working anything there at all. He's happy to just sit in that guard. And, uh, you know, th these are the kind of fights that, that you lose, Ian, when you, when you sit in that sitting guard. Rob Friedman really, really not happy with that performance there. You can see it, you know, he's very frustrated because you know what, Casper hasn't done much to him in this fight and he's going to end up losing it, Ian. Yeah, that's right. It's just sort of slipping away and he, with a, he, had, he had a positive first round even though he ended up on his back. Yeah, I mean, he it, it was, it was disappointed that because he really started well, he got the takedown like we said, you know, that's what he needed to work for. He worked the first probably minute and a half, you know, putting a lot of pressure on on, on Casper, and then just sort of give up that that position. Yeah, again, a difficult round to score. Oh, it's, it's definitely a difficult one for the judges, and I wouldn't be surprised if the judges have gone for one apiece on this uh, yeah. so far. But I still think that that uh, Aaron needs to, to to really try and try and put the pressure on this round because he's clearly got some great ability. Both both fighters have, and I think from the ground, I'd say the advantage would go to Cotton. 
in jiu-jitsu wise but the wrestling is definitely from uh, better from Casper yeah I'd say going into this last round it's anyone's fight though still both very small featherweights as well maybe make bantam at some point oh, sir, I think certainly as pros these two would both be bantamweights nice head kick there head kick that changes levels that was nice but the right hand comes back from Casper yeah it was a uh, good movement there from, from both fighters oh ni nice flurry of shots there oh the nice right that was oh and a head kick oh some big bombs coming in here this is an aggressive start. Rob oh, another massive oh, head huge kick. head kick. Rob Freeman has fired him up in the corner. You could see how frustrated he was. Aaron Cotton needs to get that space there. He needs to get a space and start throwing some big shots. That head kick is working. Yeah. It really is working for him here. And Casper sees that and goes for the takedown. Well, I think the takedown attempt was predictable. It was. And what that, an onslaught. That defence there just wasn't good enough from uh, now, but look what he's locked up now. From Aaron Cotton. Watch him now trying to work. I would like to see him try. Yeah, look, Rob Freeman wall walk. He doesn't want him to work from the back. It's difficult to work to, to win on points in MMA, as we said. Yeah, if you're on your back. Yeah, it is absolutely. And, and you know, you got to make the referees, re the, the judges, really see you putting pressure on this fighter and, and, and working it. And from the bottom, you know, it's not always visible. We, we know it, it's happening here, but it's not always visible. No, and, and they really need sort of, you know, proper takedown uh, submission attempts. It can't just be a half-hearted holding onto an arm. You need you need to see some proper submission attempts to win. Yeah, Freeman really shouting now to Warwalk. He really yeah. wants that in to get back yeah. up, doesn't he? Yeah. I don't think Casper's going to let him though. I think he'll just hold him down now for this remainder of this fight. If I'm honest. A hundred percent, I agree. Casper is not going to let him stand up. A very talented wrestler as well. You know, only a young kid searching for that first win. Well, both these guys are young kids with a lot of potential. And there we go, so referee Jason Furness there. Superb referee, actually. Yeah, very, very good. Stands both fighters up. Now, this is where Cobb's really got to go for it now. Oh, and and he's, he's throwing some big bombs, though. Oh, a nice head kick again. Just a, not enough snap in that head kick, though, Ian. You know, both guys are tired. Oh, he's big left hand. Punches nicely. Nice knee to the, to the midsection. And this is where Cobb can take over this round now. Oh, that was a good knee, though, from Casper was indeed but he needs to he, he needs to get away from that clinch there he needs to come away from the clinch and start throwing some bombs Casper needs to throw shots of his own it's like he's just a bit too hesitant on the stand up again Jay Furness will break them apart this is the last round we want to keep the action going if there's a lack of action even in the clinch he will break them apart so we go for a schoolboy headlock there this could be a mistake if he lets Casper take his back and he has done as well. Oh, nice roll for a... Uh, oh, I thought he went for a roll. Yeah, I thought, that's exactly what I thought he did there, but kind of slipped out the side door. Casper's going to finish on top here. Can he work some flurries of strikes? The judges are watching. Okay, yeah. Again, another very, very even round. It's a very, very tough fight to call that, Ian. You know, I'm not going to call a winner of it myself, to be honest with you. I'm going to, I'm going to get some splinters in my ass and sit on the fence. But to be honest, it, <laughs> I'm sat right next to you, yeah, Jamie. It, it was, it was a, you know, it was a good fight. Two young kids, both maybe need to work on a submission game, that, you know, to finish it off. But some great control from both guys, uh, you know. And let's see what the what the judges come up with on this.